a fermato indicates that the rhythmic motion of the piece stops. There are two types of fermatas, one that contains two or more beats in the rhythm of the preceding passage, and one that is of an undetermined length. It is a second type, one of undetermined length, that we encounter mostly in Orthodox church music. In slow tempos, or especially when a retard is indicated, followed by the fermato, the conductor can show the coming of the fermato by a broadening of its conducting movements. In this way, there is a slowing of the tempo going into the fermata. Sometimes the composer does not want that, and there is no retard. Then the, then the fermato occurs exactly on the beat, and then continues for as long as the, as the conductor desires. Now, but the piece continues after the fermato, the cutoff of the fermata can be used as a preparatory beat for the next entrance. The hands of the conductor should be in a high position at the end of the fermata for the cutoff. So we'll demonstrate a, a measure of four followed by the fermato and that concludes the piece. Preparation, position, eye contact, Preparation, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, off. That's where the fermata was, was over a, a whole note in four, four meter. So the conductor, some, some, some con uh, conducting books will, will tell the conductor to, to beat the full measure and then extend it. And that's how he, uh, he recommends conducting the fermato. I always find that if I beat uh, four beats or three beats, whatever, the choir is accenting, even though they're holding and saying only one syllable. So that's why I prefer having the fermato simply as one beat in terms of motion. But the value is at least, at least the full measure plus. So... Let me demonstrate the fermato doing the beat. All right, so one measure of four followed by the fermato. One, two, three, four. Hold. And now the, the form that I recommend uh, doing the fermato at the end of a piece. And by the way, in Baroque music, the fermato many times will indicate it's just the end of a piece. It doesn't indicate to hold it longer. So that's the Baroque music. Our church music, though, fermato means holding it longer. All right, so now the fermato after a measure of four. One, two, three, four, one. Now, a, a word about cutoffs. We can use the one hand, as I just did, or we can use two hands. We can use two hands even though we want a soft cutoff. Let me demonstrate that. Measure of four followed by the fermato. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, you, once more, using simply the right hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Off. Now, it could be that the fermato uh, is on a chord, and the, and, the, and the composer has indicated it's to be sung fortissimo. All right, and we want a sharp cutoff. All right, then our cutoff is going to be sharper. Position, preparation, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, off. And that you're going to get, the singers, when they see that motion, there's going to be a strong accent for the cutoff. Generally, we do, want, do not want that. It's not required and not even desirable in church music and singing of hymns. So the cutoff of the, of the hymn or the cutoff of a hymn that ends with a fermato, 
I recommend that we make it small, not sharp, not heavy, not strong. Although, in general, the general rule is that the conductor should not be timed during the fermato. There might be a tendency for the singers to lose energy during the fermato. In order to ensure that the tone remains vibrant, it's best if the palms of the hand are not up or open. The conductor might use the right hand in a movement upwards until the cutoff, while using the left hand with open hand to indicate that the singers must keep the tone vibrant without losing any energy. Let me give you an example. One, two, three, four, one, off. That's asking the singers to hold the tone. All right? And that's a good use of the left hand.